My fellow citizens and residents, together we are about to embark upon a new year that will rapidly move our beloved country to the next level of social progress and economic prosperity. While global growth is projected to be 2.6% for 2022, the United Nations Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, has calculated that Antigua and Barbuda's economy has grown by a whopping 8.3%. That is a marvelous achievement by our nation. And my government congratulates all citizens and residents for their contribution to this success. We have surpassed every other Caribbean country except Guyana with its newly found wealth in oil and gas. This greater economic growth is confirmation that our economy has generated new investments, more jobs, and greater business activity in a range of services, including construction and tourism. As a people, we have every right to be proud that our small country has performed so well. Through sound government and creative policies, along with the resilience we have demonstrated as a people, our country is emerging successfully from the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which gravely impacted the entire world. We are still confronting the protracted consequences of COVID-19 and the Russian invasion of Ukraine that resulted in shortages of food products and agricultural inputs. Through a number of interventions by our government, we have studied the price of petroleum products to everyone in our country. Further, unlike other countries, we have not imposed additional taxes on our people and duties on imports. The government has absorbed these additional costs and implemented measures to increase revenues by incentivizing and expanding business in the country. My distinguished countrymen and countrywomen, it is through economic growth and astute partnerships with the private sector, as well as our government's own intervention and participation in various investments, that we have passed on savings and earnings to families. However, the world has not yet stabilized. The IMF has just published a report in which it says the following, and I quote, Global economic activity is experiencing a broad-based and sharper-than-expected slowdown, with inflation higher than seen in several decades. The cost of living crisis, tightening financial conditions in most regions, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the lingering COVID-19 pandemic all weigh heavily on the outlook. Global growth is forecast to slow from 6% in 2021 to 3.2% in 2022 and 2.7% 2 in 2023. This is the weakest growth profile since 2001, except for the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic." End of quote. My friends, naturally, these circumstances impact our country. Yet, we have performed better than many others. While global growth was 6.0% in 2021, we enjoyed greater growth of 7.43%. In 2022, as growth in the world is projected to decline by 3.2%, we defied the odds and are forecasted by the international financial institutions to grow by 8.3%. Therefore, in these troubling global circumstances, our country requires tried, tested, and successful leadership and government. As a nation, we are at a pivotal moment. We have before us a fork in the road and a decision of which path to take. One path was risked before with disastrous consequences, including economic failure, represented by a 25% decline in the economy, and high unemployment, bank failure, which cost taxpayers over $300 million to resolve, fiscal failure that included burdensome debt with over 50% in arrears, the imposition of personal income tax, late payment of salaries and wages and social security pensions, and expanded poverty. 
That was the UPP government with Harold Lovell as the Minister of Finance. The other path is the one that has always taken our nation to higher heights of employment, economic growth and development that has attracted investments, improved health services, expanded educational facilities, increased home, car and business ownership, more than double water production, delivered high-speed broadband facilities, created opportunities for all, and most significantly, successfully lifted us up as a nation. That is your high-performance Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party administration. In a few days into the new year, our electorate will have to make a choice between the established economic success of the ABLP administration and the proven financial failure of the UPP and Harold Lovell. Only this time, the UPP choice is worse. Not one of the UPP aspirants to office has any proven successful track record in government, in financial administration, and in economic competence. Risking the UPP is risking retrogression and your future, as well as the future of your children. For just as it took years to recover the country from the last UPP government, so will it take years to rebuild what we would lose. Do any of us want to return to losing our savings, to high unemployment, to losing our homes and cars, to high debt, to IMF harsh conditionalities, and to economic catastrophe? I say to you, definitely not. And that is why, as I address you on the cusp of a new year, I want to explain that our country's ambition for our country is to achieve great economic growth in 2023 and to ensure that we exceed that remarkable growth rate of 8.3% in 2022. We all have very good reasons to be assured that we will achieve further high growth, many more jobs and greater revenues in 2023 with consequential benefits for all. A survey of projects and programs which are already on the way because of confidence in our government and which will be implemented in 2023 on the score or realistic expectations. I will mention just a few of these exciting projects in the interests of time. Global Ports Holdings will spend at least $100 million at the Newgate Street coastline to construct a modern terminal building, shops, restaurants, casino, health spa, boardwalks, and entertainment facilities, including an amphitheater. This project will provide hundreds of jobs in the construction phase and hundreds of permanent jobs and business opportunities for our people. That project is about to start. Cruise tourism will be bolstered by the investment of another $270 million by one of the world's largest cruise ship companies, Royal Caribbean International, RCI. An agreement had been signed with RCI in March of 2019 to establish the Caribbean's largest beach club at Fort James to be utilized by the passengers on their ships calling at Atiga as well as by our local people. The project was deferred because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which crippled the cruise industry until 2022. However, RCI is now ready to proceed, and this project will be constructed and operationalized in 2023. Again, jobs will be provided in construction and in the provision of a wide range of services by our people. The private sector, both local and foreign, has displayed great confidence and trust in our government and in the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Over the last eight years, they have invested almost a billion dollars in our economy through new and expanded businesses. The private sector has retained this confidence and they are proving it by further investment in 2023 that will catapult Antigua and Barbuda's rise to the next higher level of development. Our sister island Barbuda now ranks among the fastest growing island community in the world, boasting a renewable energy plant, 
new air and sea ports to be completed by June of 2023. Other investments in Barbuda include the over 650 million by Robert Emero and James Packer in a new resort to be built in Barbuda, as well as the Peace and Love and Happiness Resort, which will complete its first 60 luxury homes and condominiums on Barbuda in 2023, and a 350 million luxury resort being developed by a group of local and foreign investors and these will obviously continue to contribute to the development on Barbuda. Private sector has also demonstrated a high level of confidence in your administration on Antigua. Next level developments include Moongate Antigua, which will continue construction of a 49 suite all-inclusive boutique, hotel and spa at Half Moon Bay. Nikki Beach, a luxury beach club, will be constructed at Jolly Beach and the Royalton Chic, a 350-room luxury five-star property, will open in November 2023 under Dickinson Bay, providing over 800 new jobs. Additionally, several hotel properties will be expanded in 2023. These include Sandals Grand, which will begin expansion of its property in early 2023 employing an additional 300 persons, and Hawksbill Hotel, which will be fully refurbished and enhanced with added facilities to reopen on the 1st of November, 2023. These facilities will all provide new and more jobs for Antiguans and Barbudans, growing our economy, increasing the contributions of social security, medical benefits, and education levy, and strengthening the capacity to satisfy pension payments and bolster our health and educational services. For its part, our government intends to continue the significant investment of $1.4 billion in infrastructural projects and social development that it has made over the last eight years in the interest of the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And you know too that we have paid up all pensions. We have also paid back pay. We're making progress. In 2023, there will be substantially more investment to accelerate development to move us up to the next higher level of progress in development. High on our priority list is to further satisfy the water needs of our nation and to ensure that no area, no home or business is deprived of water. Our government regards access to water as a right, but we inherited years of neglect of the water system and continuing and worsened drought conditions that plagues our country. We are not content with it. And that is why our government invested over $130 million in purchasing and installing reverse osmosis arrow plants throughout the country. No other administration in the history of our nation has invested more in water infrastructure than our government during the last eight years. I'm aware that despite the government's best efforts, there are still gaps in the delivery of water. The addition of another 3 million gallons a day water plant in Bethesda by the second quarter of next year would satisfy the full demand for water. I assure you that we have made the necessary investments and that we will not rest until this matter is satisfactorily resolved. Other priorities will result in the further modernization of our country. The overall objective is to attain and sustain GDP growth over the next five years of at least 6%, which is inclusive, generates jobs, and reduces vulnerability and poverty. To do this, we will continue to invest in education, health, and other sectors. The sum of $216 million has already been secured from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to continue the physical build-out and equipping of UE5 islands, as well as its capacity to educate our people and those in the region to a higher level. My dear countrymen and countrywomen, in health, we are now constructing a renal clinic 
which will make our hospital capable of advancing the quality and the quantity of dialysis treatment and kidney replacements. We will make a cardiac unit operational at Celeste Bird Medical Center in 2023 to treat heart conditions, and we will also perform hip and knee replacements. My dear people, we have made significant progress. In adapting for the impact of climate change, we will continue to invest in climate resilient infrastructure. This will include utilities, roads, housing, and information communication technologies, all of which will generate new and more employment opportunities and increase revenues. Our government will also continue to promote digital innovation by further enhancing the provision of affordable high-speed internet. We see the provision of affordable high-speed internet as a public good. We've already built out fiber optic cables to every area of the country. And with the investment by APO in its own on the sea cable, we will deliver widespread use of affordable high-speed broadband in schools and for health, education, and business. Importantly, in 2023, we will accelerate the process of digitization of government ministries, departments, and statutory bodies. The objective is twofold. One, to maintain records in a digital form and to facilitate expanded e-government, allowing the public to complete forms and applications, to pay bills and secure receipts via the internet, covering more public services. This will avoid persons having to travel to government offices and during long waiting times. The second is to permit anyone in the public to go on the internet and monitor government's income and expenditure, including the government's purchasing and award of contracts. This is all about increasing the transparency in government. This latter initiative is an essential ingredient in making the government more accountable more accountable to the people by giving every person access to government's transactions and to ensure that they can follow progress. My friends, Antigua and Barbuda must modernize to remain competitive in the global economy and to give our people a share in the world market. The development of digital business, giving individuals and companies access to high-speed digital technologies, will modernize their business models and provide new revenue and value-producing opportunities. These new opportunities will incorporate traditional businesses, but it will also include persons in Antigua and Barbuda who want to market their creative work and services across the globe. This is important and will generate thousands of jobs for people. My administration has outperformed the UPP administration in all sectors and in every aspect of our development. Currently, we are in the midst of a housing revolution that will continue in 2023 and beyond. We will expand the housing program that has provided hundreds of Antiguans and Barbudans with homes for the first time in their lives, or for that matter, has improved their living conditions considerably. Our urban renewal and beautification program will target the renewal of homes and beautification of communities, especially those surrounding the Central Business District, to include Point and Villa, Grace Farm, Green Bay, Otters, Clay Hall, Fort Road, among others. My fellow citizens and residents, I have given you a taste of what 2023 holds for our country and for each of you. The prospects are real and the future is bright if sound government and visionary leadership continue. Personally, I believe in our country and our people, and I'm dedicated to working diligently with you to take our people forward, to provide them with living standards second to none, for them to be the equal of all with dignity and pride of who we are and what we have achieved. So as we enter a new year together, we can do this. We can show that our priorities are job creation, empowerment of our people, giving opportunities to our youth, 
respecting and honoring our women, beautifying and saving our environment, fighting for our country's rights, and claiming global respect by standing up for fairness, justice, and principles. Together, we can look lies and deception directly in the eye and rightly reject them. We can rejoice in our remarkable success in managing COVID-19 and our courage in opening our borders before all others so that our people could come out of their shutters and walk boldly into earning incomes. We can view the bright heights that are so evidently before us and have faith that together we can reach them for the benefit of all. I remind you that at the end of the day, despite our differences, we are one nation, one people with a common destiny. We must be inclusionary in all that we do. No one must be left behind, not even those with whom there are now political differences. We have a country to continue to build for the benefit of all. Let us unite behind that noble and worthy and fruitful purpose. My friends, I wish you all a very happy new year with God's blessings on you, your families, and our beloved Antigua and Barbuda. I thank you.